And now, a Thanksgiving moment. You know, this is the time of year when we realize what it is we have to be thankful for. And of course, I'm talking about Thanksgiving. I know it. Hang on. This is called suede, buddy, so you need to be careful with that lollipop. It's time to be with your kids and your nieces and nephews, and don't touch them. That's just going to egg them on. That's just... It's time when I remember all the warmth and love of conversations and, uh, well, let's just... Guys, hey, guys, seriously. Why don't you Whoa. come help? Don't even... But I know that I remember growing up... You know what, this is not gonna work. Haley, I'm sorry, my back is killing me. This kid's about to break my knee off. This one is as ripe as it gets. We need some, a lot of wipes for that one. Well, that's right, and I remember the turkey and dressing, and uh, you bet there was some cranberry sauce if uh, Uncle Teddy had anything to do with it. And uh, Uncle Floyd, I, 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 I tell you what, Haley, can, you've gotta get her out of here, because my headache is about to explode here. Um, hey, seriously, Daryl, yeah. how about helping out this year? Hey, I'll tell you what, why don't you go outside and wait for me? All right. And uh, I remember uh, sitting around and laughing as a family, and sweetie, I have got to have some room here to do this. I know, I t you know what, this is like a practical joke. This is terrible. Okay, I'm about to freak out here. Daryl, should we put you at the kids' table since you're helping about as much as they are, or? Hold on, hold on. No point, do not point at me. Do not point. So my hope is that you have a very blessed time and a relaxing Thanksgiving. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Does that rain true for anybody? I, you know, brings back a Thanksgiving memory or something, uh, perhaps. Yeah, I think I, I like that video so much because it makes me laugh, but also I think it's a reality check of what it feels like sometimes, right? And the chaos of family and people and kids and everything going on. But uh, it's, a, it's a great, great week if you are a Christian and a Christ follower because it is a week that focuses us on thankfulness to the Lord. I want to, before we go on with the message this morning, I want to let you know of a couple things that are happening uh, with the church this Friday. So um, traditionally, uh, we have some other activities. This year, we are going to participate in this thing going on downtown called Enid Lights Up the Plains. Is anyone familiar with that? Yeah, anybody seen this like big tree downtown? Anybody big tree people? Okay. Nobody's seen anything about this tree or heard. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, a few. Six of us have heard about it. So, yeah. So, hey, we're going to be down there. Uh, we're actually going to do a float in the parade this year, okay? Um, it's going to be really awesome. And how, how will you know it's Oakwood's float? Well, there'll, there'll, there'll be a difference to our float than ones that we've seen in the past down there. And that it will be really, really, really bright white, okay? So, you see the really, really bright white trailer and, you know, the truck that's pulling. It will have some Oakwood uh, paraphernalia on it. But... Uh, when you see that coming by, cheer, you know, cheer for God's church, uh, and uh, we're hoping to be a, a light down there. And also what we're doing is we're having a booth, okay? Our booth, I think, is going to be on the west side of the square downtown, and we are going to be handing out for free 2,000 balloons, Okay, now these are red balloons with a, with a Christian uh, logo on them, but inside each balloon is going to be some LEDs. So these will be like flashing LED, glow-in-the-dark red balloons. Uh, we're going to be handing out 2,000 of them. Um, if you'd like to help with that, that would be awesome. If you're just hanging around downtown, come by the booth and just say hello. But if you could help us Friday night, um, we would love that. Uh, Alan Seibel or Melissa Lohman are uh, needing some help with balloons and that kind of stuff. So if you can do that. But we would love to see you downtown. Uh, uh, as you're hanging out down there, come by, uh, see your friends at Oakwood, um, and, and let's celebrate Christ, right? Let's, let's see Christ lifted up as we get into a full swing of the holiday and the Christmas uh, season. So uh, we'll be doing that th again this, this Friday downtown, so come and be a part of that. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to invite you to turn to the book of Psalms. We're going to be looking at Psalm 103 this morning, Psalm 103. If you didn't bring your Bible or you want to follow along in a different way, you can do that on the app. And you can do that on your phone or your tablet. Just download the Oakwood app. If you go to Sermon Notes, all of the scriptures and all the bullet points and all that will be right there for you uh, to engage with this morning. And again, we want you to engage the Word of God. We feel like it's more memorable. God has more opportunity to speak when we're reading and engaging in that. So uh, please uh, please, please engage the scripture this morning, Psalm 103. And I'm going to begin uh, this morning by just reading that. This is a psalm of thanksgiving. There's many of those uh, in the Bible. There's a category of psalms called the Psalms of Thanksgiving. This is a psalm of thanksgiving. It's written by David, David and Goliath, David, King David. 
David and Bathsheba, David, that guy, okay? David wrote this, Psalm 103, and let's, uh, let's allow it to speak to us this morning. Praise the Lord, my soul. All of my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed, He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows it over and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all of his heavenly hosts, You, his servants, who do his will. Praise the Lord, all of his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. What a great psalm and a great way to to get us to focus on what this week is really about. It's really about praising and showing gratitude and thanksgiving and praise to our Heavenly Father. I want to share three thoughts with you uh, this morning that comes out of this passage Uh, The first one is this, express your gratitude and praise to the Lord. That's just earth shattering, isn't it? But apply it, express your gratitude and praise to the Lord. That means actually expressing me, expressing it means actually doing something about it, to, to speak about him, to speak to him. But do something that takes action of expression of your gratitude and your thanksgiving to God. This is active. It is not passive. Look how he starts the psalm. Praise the Lord. That's an action word. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Maybe you read the old version of this. Maybe you memorized it. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all of my inmost being. Do what? Take action and praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. We're supposed to be a people that are active, not passive, when it comes to Thanksgiving. We are to take action in expression. That's why you see this word praise so many times, so many times throughout the psalm. It's because it's reminding us to take action and to express. Express your gratitude and your praise to the Lord. Why? It's because I really believe this. Unexpressed gratitude communicates ingratitude. Unexpressed gratitude communicates ingratitude. And I think ingratitude is one of our worst vices. As humans, to one another, it's kind of an ouch sometimes, but especially and all the more to our Heavenly Father. Like if I'm God, I'm thinking that's going to be an affront to me. For people who do not express gratitude and thankfulness in their hearts. And then you get to the point, right, where we have to ask the question, why? Why don't we express gratitude to God? I think there is a plethora of reasons, but I'm going to share just, just three of those with you. The first one, I think, could be this. It could be pride. Pride. A lack of expressed gratitude may indicate that you have an inflated view of self, that you actually struggle with pride, this inflated view of yourself. 
You know, some, some people do this, they're like, oh yeah, I'm a self-made man. Really? Never caught a break in life? You're just, you did it all yourself? Yeah, I put a, build, build everything on the, my back and it's all on me and I did this and I did that. And, really? All on you, 100% you? No one's ever helped you. God hasn't graced you. God hasn't given you a break. God hasn't taken care of you. God hasn't seen you through some things. All you, all you. Sometimes we don't express our gratitude to God because of pride and that lack of expressed gratitude may indicate an inflated view of self. Another reason why we might not express our gratitude to God is pride. Sometimes expression of gratitude feels like an admission of weakness to us. I think if we're being really honest, we don't like to feel weak, <laughs> right? I mean, we're Americans, by golly. We're, we're strong, land free, home of the brave, bravery, courage. Those aren't weak things. And if I somehow express gratitude to God and give God some credit here, it feels like, you know, an admission of my humanness, my frailty, my relative weakness in the flesh. Why don't we express our gratitude to God? Third thing, pride. Oh, do you see a theme here? Yes. Sometimes we express gratitude best, I think, in our brokenness. That's not a word we used to describe ourselves. That's not a word we really want to use to describe ourselves. A broken people. A people of brokenness. And yet I wonder if it's in those humble and contrite times, in those times of true brokenness, in those times where we humble ourselves and realize let me echo the words of the Apostle Paul. What a wretch of a person I am without God Almighty. But sometimes I think we don't express gratitude to God because of pride for a whole lot of different reasons. But if you think about it, in your human condition, our hearts often gravitate toward gratefulness. A person that expresses gratitude to us, our heart and it would be attracted to them, would would gravitate toward them, would appreciate them. And so I would say this, don't ever let anyone out grateful you. Don't let anyone out grateful you. It's such an attractive quality and it's rare today. And yet we are so blessed. Come on, come on. We are so blessed. And I would take it a step further and say this. God wants to hear from his children. God wants to hear from his children. He wants, he wants you to express gratitude to him. And if you're a parent, you could totally relate to this. Sometimes we do something and we give good gifts or we do acts of service to our family, maybe to our spouse. Sometimes as parents, we do that to our kids, right? And doesn't it mean a lot to you if your children would express gratitude to you? So I have a fleet of vehicles in my home now. That's what happens when you're girls grow up and, you know, turn 16. And so um, my, my uh, fleet of vehicles now has four. And in my fleet of vehicles, I have a couple teenage drivers. And what I'll do every once in a while is, you know, um, we're, we're training that when something leaks out of the car, you should tell dad. We're, we're, we're training in that. Training in when the brake light comes on because brake fluid's all over the ground, you should tell dad, you know. Um, it's making this sound because a rock got between uh, the, the brake pad and, and the liner there. And it's making this sound every time I brake. It's really bad on the corner. You know, stuff like that. Tell dad. Tell dad about that. So every once in a while, dad just decides to be a little proactive. And if I've got five minutes, I'll jump. I'll grab the keys. I'll jump in their car and I'll drive it just to make sure there's no lights on. <laughs> just to make sure there's no sounds. There's nothing leaking out from underneath the car. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning that. Okay. I'm learning that. And, and they're learning that. And and every once in a while when I do that, I just try to feel like, hey, be a good dad and give them a little blessing. And I might go run their car through the car wash. You know, I might, I might just go, go wash it. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll look and check their gas tank. And, oh, man, they only got a quarter tank and I'll go fill it with gas. And it feels good. It feels good to do that, to serve others. What feels really great to me, if I were being 100% honest, is when I get home and I throw the keys back. And, and the next day when they're getting in their car, they're like, Wow. Somebody washed my car. They, they even vacuumed out all of the hair in my car. <laughs> and filled it up with gas. And most of the time, my daughters will know that was probably dad. Not to say mom wouldn't, but, you know, mom's doing her own things. And 
It means a lot to me as a parent to have somebody acknowledge that, for someone to express gratitude. Because I go back to what we were talking about just a minute ago. Unexpressed gratitude sometimes feel like, feels like ingratitude. If I do that for them and they never say thank you, they never acknowledge it, in fact, it's like it didn't happen. How does it make you feel? You're kind of like, come on now. Come on now, I just blessed you. And you as a parent would like for your children, because it means a lot. And it's, it's this acknowledgement thing. It's to acknowledge that someone has done something for you. I think we're losing that just as a culture today. And whatever happened to the thank you note? You know, you, 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 you maybe uh, give someone something, maybe it's a gift, or maybe it's a financial blessing, or maybe you just bless them through service. And, and I remember, you know, growing up and, and being taught, you always acknowledge that. And if you're really thankful for it, it speaks to the person that gave it, right? It expresses gratitude, but it is an action step on your part. If you never say thank you and you never write that note, you never send that email, maybe it's just an email or maybe it's just a quick text on your phone. Hey, thanks for, for whatever it is. Thanks for talking to me the other day or thanks for stopping by my office doing that. Whatever it is, when you express that, it is received as gratitude that you appreciated them. But if you never express it, it's received as ingratitude because what does it say to the person really? That meant nothing to me. Now, let's quit talking about ourselves. And let's talk about our Heavenly Father. God wants to hear from us. God is a loving Heavenly Father that bestows so much grace and so much forgiveness and so many blessings in our life. We need to be mindful we need to be expressive because I think some of us think, well, well God knows my thoughts, right? And so, I, I mean, I'm deep down inside, I feel, I feel thankful. And so I don't maybe express it on the outside, right? But God knows my thoughts. And so he knows the deep down inside, I really do appreciate him. But that's not what we're reading in the text today. Praise the Lord. All these action steps, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. Express your gratitude and your praise to God, which really goes into this next one. Number two, make a list and count your blessings. Actually, make a list and count your blessings. I know, man, this is, this is really out there, but make a list and count your blessings because that's what David did. Look what he does. At the end of verse two, he says, and forget not all his benefits. And then what he does is he runs off in the next several verses of this psalm, the list of benefits of knowing the Lord God Almighty. Listen to these. Who forgives all of your sins, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. And yes, some of you are in the pit and you know it. And crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, maybe even better things than you wish for your life. So that your youth is what? Renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all of the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate. He is gracious. He is slow to anger, abounding in love. Go to verses 11 and 12. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed your transgressions from us. And see, David just continues with the list. Make a list. Check it twice. And count your blessings because you truly are blessed. And I know some of you come in and life's kind of got you down. And you're like, you know what? I'm not feeling super blessed right now. In fact, I'm feeling super stressed. And, and I've got a lot going on, and, and things are just kind of negative. My relationships are going south, and we got this financial stuff going on. And medically, it's not going well for me. And, and, you, and you may come in, and you may have this perspective that, you know, I, I, I'll be honest. You know, I, I, I don't feel grateful. In fact, I, I would say I'm more in the category of the ungrateful. But then I think... Exercise number two is all the more important to make a list and to count your blessings. Because if you reflect on a deep level, you will realize how truly blessed you are. James 1.17 speaks to this and reminds us. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the scripture tells us. 
Isn't it good to have him as our rock and our salvation, our foundation for everything in life? And everything good that comes down is from above, from the Father of heavenly, of heavenly lights. And so we should always be thankful to God for anything good in your life. Sometimes we have a perspective problem with this. I believe sometimes we have this huge perspective problem that, you know, we get focused on, oh, all the wrong things, the bad things, the negative things, and that's easy today, right? Right? Just turn on the news. Just turn, just turn on the news and watch it every night. Watch it like religion. Watch it every morning. Watch it, every, you know, watch it the noon break and watch it every night. We need a perspective. Let me give you a little perspective this morning. If you had a roof over your head last night, you have running water in your home, and most of you do because you smell good, um, and, and you had at least, at least two square meals yesterday, then you are richer than 94% of all the people in all the world. Just by that. And now that you hear that, you're like, oh, wow. I thought my love stunk until I just heard that. I'm actually more blessed the 94% of the entire world. I bet, you, I bet you could ask some missionaries about that. They might be able to tell you some stories that might give you a little perspective. I know I said, I said this years ago, this little acronym, ICBW, ICBW, that when I get ungrateful or, you know, life's got me out of sorts, I remember ICBW. What does that stand for? It could be worse. Because the fact is, folks, whatever you're going through right now, it could be worse. It could be. And I know some of you are like, well, I'm going through cancer treatments right now, and I'm, you don't know what my fight, and, and my marriage is hanging on, my kid, you, you don't know. And, and I don't know everybody's situation. But I think let your mind go to a worst case scenario and there's something worse than what you're going through right now. And sometimes I think that's what you need to step back and say, you know what? could be worse. Some of you don't have a job right now and you're like, man, it could be worse. Well, how can it get this? Just think about it. could be worse. And maybe if we change that perspective when we come to Thanksgiving and we do what, what he's done first and what we're challenged to do first, which is express that gratitude to God, to actually express it, to actually say it, pray it, sing it, express it in some way. And then we make this inventory, this list, and we count our blessings. What, what's, what's the old hymn say? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. And we count our blessings and we make the list. And we realize, man, for some of us, man, it really could be worse. God is really, really good. And Scripture so many times doesn't say, oh, I want you to feel it. That's not even what it's saying in the passage today. It's not saying feel it. I, I feel grateful and thankful, and that's good. No, express it. Do something about it. Take an action step. So we're going to express gratitude and praise the Lord. Make a list, count your blessings. And the last one is this. Pretty simple again. Remembering who the Lord is will bring deep gratefulness from within. Just remembering who the Lord is will bring this deep gratefulness from within. It comes from these deep places. And what's interesting is David begins and ends with this in the psalm. Look at verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. And if you read the old version of this, even the old NIV, it said, Oh, my soul. It's this longing from deep within. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all of my inmost being. He's talking about your heart. He's talking about your soul. All of my inmost being. Praise his holy name. He's holy. He's different. He's set apart. He's our God. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And forget not his benefits. And then you get down to the very end of the psalm. Praise the Lord. All his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. He's saying to us, praise the Lord from the depths. Praise the, the Lord from the deep places. And reflect on your life and think about all of those things deliverances that the Lord has given you. And your expression is praise. Your posture is praise. Your expression is to worship him. And here in the Old Testament, to use words like praise and worship, 
That wasn't like, you know, we was like, oh, yeah, praise him, you know, a little raise hands, sing, sing a little song. That's, that's not what it meant. When you, when you said you're going to praise the Lord, you're going to worship the Lord. It, it, that word for worship in, in the original Hebrew, it literally meant to blow a kiss toward. Now, we do that today, and that's really cute, right? It's like, you know, if you're a grandparent, you know, the grandbabies, you know, oh, blow me a kiss, go grand, grand, grandma kiss, you know, Mwah. you know, we make it this cute thing, right? But back in Bible times, it meant something way more. You would never do that to just anyone. You would only do that as an expression of deep, deep affection for someone. You saved that for your spouse, for your intimate family members, and to your Lord. And it was because it wasn't lip service. It wasn't just something from our mouth. It was something from within us. We're reminded of this. The prophet Isaiah speaks to the nation of Israel in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. I think he's even speaking to us today. Listen to what it says. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that have been taught. It's like they just, they just go through the motions. They just do the human rules thing. Do we ever get caught up with that as a church, as Christians? Oh, yeah, service, right? We go service, 9 o'clock and 1030. Every Sunday we've got options, you know, because maybe it's inconvenient. We don't want to come at 9 or maybe inconvenient. We don't want to come at 1030. I've got to come at 9 because more convenient. You know, and, and we come to church, what do we do? We sing songs, right? Oh, praise, woo, praise. And we're going to sing, sing songs and, you know, have some prayers. we have some announcements, you know. Uh, um, uh, we'll have a sermon. We'll have a message. And we'll, have a, we'll take a time of communion. We'll remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And then we'll go on. And, and that's just kind of our human condition. And that's just kind of, you know, that's how we've been taught, you know, to, 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 to worship and to praise, you know, as you go to the service, you know. That's, the, that's what you do is you go to the service to do that. And you, you mouth the words. They're on the screen. They're, you know, and even if you're online, they're, they're on the screen. And so, you, you, you know, you're supposed to stand out of respect for God and in awe of his majesty. And you, and you stand and you, you say the words on the screen. And that's how you express praise to, to, to God and I wonder, would God ever say about our church or about our people or about me? They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. What's, what's God saying? I don't care about the lip service. I care about the heart. But what's amazing is when you have it in your heart, it just has this tendency to come out of your mouth. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, is what Scripture says. And so when your heart is loving God and trusting God and serving God and appreciating God and, and welling up with gratitude and thanksgiving to God, it comes out in this expression of worship. And make no mistake, David knew exactly what he was writing and saying here. He says, all of my inmost being, all of my heart, all of what I am, I worship him. I worship him with my attitude. I worship him with my actions. I worship him with my, with my family. I worship him with my finances. I worship him with my words. I will worship him with my, with my work, the, the, the daily tasks that I do. I will worship him with relationships. I will worship him with my voice and my vocation, with my church, with my hobbies, and maybe even with my habits. I will worship and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in my inmost being praise his holy name not only in word but also expressed from deep within the heart my inmost being praise his holy name and the application for this week of thanksgiving is difficult not easy because we are we are conditioned to just go through the motions to check the box, right? And it looks right to everybody else in the room, right? Oh, he's standing, he's standing, good. Okay, check that box. He's moving his mouth. You know, some of you can sing and sing wonderfully. Sing out. Some of you can't sing. Bible says make a joyful noise. Sing out. I love me some joyful noise people in God's church. They know they can't sing and they're going to praise his name anyway. Come on, right? Fact is most of us can't sing, so we're in this together. Let's praise this holy name. But let's do it from within. Let's do it from the right heart. Let's do it from the right place. Because I know that Thanksgiving can be difficult if you don't have 
Wait, maybe that's the problem. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's the application. I don't praise and I don't express gratitude to God because I don't have a relationship with God or his son, Jesus Christ. And I wonder, wouldn't it be hard to be truly thankful and grateful for his grace and his love and his mercy and his forgiveness if you don't even know him? And that's my fear as a pastor many times. You know about him. Lots of people know about him. Quote some scriptures. But do you know him? Do you spend time with him? Do you spend time in this word so it can speak to you? What's amazing about the word of God is we are called to read and study and know the word of God. And in reading the word of God, guess what? The word of God reads us, doesn't it? Isn't that amazing? You ever experienced that? You're reading it and it's just like, whoa. And we cry out together. We cry out in the spirit of Paul, right? What a wretch of a man I am. Who can save me from this life of sin? What a wretch of a person I am. Who will save us? And that passage goes on to say, thanks be to the Lord and God our Father and to his son, Jesus Christ, who while we were yet sinners, willingly died for us to lead us out of that life and lead us into life that is truly alive. Alive because of Christ. And maybe for some of us too, we've made that faith decision to put all our faith in Jesus Christ, but we've walked away. Thanksgiving, uh, turkey, turkey, Football, family, friends, check the box. See you for the next family gathering. Not this year. Let's really worship him from the heart. 